All right, brought you back for the chaos. All the bolts are loose. Oh, this, <laughs> this front rod holding it. I tried to get that rubber out of there and it just wouldn't do it. All right, we can fix that. Bottom control arm. And there we go. That is, I don't know if you can see it. That is one side of the suspension done. And I'm telling you, these arms look like crap. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's eight to, uh, I don't know. Eight through it some. I may have to order some. Because uh, what that'll do is it's just gonna, it ain't gonna get better. Uh, well, I apologize. I ran out of memory. Well, of course, um, I was talking about the strut rod brace, whatever they call that thing. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Anyway, I was talking about that, and I realized that was a six-owner one. I don't know if there's any difference in them. I never looked the part numbers up. And I've got the VA ones over there, so if they're in better shape, we'll use them or I have to order a set. Uh, I had to buy a die grinder because mine shot craps a while back and I just never bought one. So I'd buy one today to fix those two holes at bottom A arm that uh, were offset with that plate. It doesn't matter. I ended up doing that. So I've unpackaged everything. And one thing that the upper A arm comes with, uh, of course, are the nuts and washers, but also comes with two different grease serves that are 90 degree. And I recommend if you're doing one of these years of Mustangs, to use these, the, the 90 degree. Take the ones, the, the straight ones out. You'll never get a grease gun in there. Um, you really need them 90 degree ones. So I'm going to, and it comes with a Carter, Carter pin too, obviously. Um, so I'm going to, the nuts and washers need to be up here. I did get that strut, the old shock and the strut tower piece off the strut top shock mount. I got those off while they was off camera. At that point, it was like, I'm tired of messing with it. I just need to get this done. And uh, so, taking the greaser, it's got a 7 millimeter to take out and 3 8 putting in. I don't ask me. Uh, don't ask me. And of course, grease everything before you put your tires on and stuff. This is going to be multi-part segment. This is just the front end um, components. The steering will be probably one. The brakes is going to, you know, they're going to be one. Um, just for the simple fact that I, I don't have any idea where, you know, where, where I'm going to have time to get what I'm going to get done and what I'm not. And these need to be orientated a certain way, but right now these are way in the wrong place. So, and the Carter pin is actually also... There's one tape to it. There was one tape to the bottom one also for the nut on top. And there is a difference between the nuts uh, for the top ball joint and the bottom ball joint. Even though they look, they're look they the same size. I'm not sure if you're seeing what I'm doing. I'm taking the nut off and the cover. But um, this is a coarser thread than I think the bottom ball joint is. So you can, you can change. The nuts are exactly the same side, but I couldn't get one to start. Now this one is. The other side wouldn't. Don't ask me why. Maybe just had a booger on it. I don't know. Doesn't matter. So let's uh, straighten these out. This is a dead blow. You can hear the sand. Uh, you need to add a certain angle because that goes in there like this. So those have to be facing it right way. We'll take your protective covers off. Now what I found and you guys are probably, I am not gonna use this tool proper. I'm just telling you right now, I guess I should put something together. Um, forgot to put the spring perch on there. This goes like this, the spring perch, or shock mount, whatever you wanna call it, actually uh, has a uh, kind of a tongue sit here. The spring, the spring only goes one way. Uh, the bottom 
spring actually has a coil that just kind of ends on its own. The top is flat and there's a rubber uh, bushing that goes on there. I'll bring that spring over here in a bit. I'll do that. But anyway, so that goes on there like this. And then it comes with its own nuts. This whole kit, I can't remember how much it was, but Scott Drake's one. I can't remember if I ordered it off of JC. I think I probably ordered off JC Pony, but I'm, I don't remember for sure. Um, prices are subject to change, obviously, at any time with the crap that's been going on. So, I mean, it is what it is. I think it's 916. Yep. Good idea, and this won't move on its own. Now I have to I had to use a pry bar and last to uh, these things pop out of there real easy, and they and they won't go back in where the crap these these rubber isolators. I'm not sure if one fell off there would be 100% terrible. I mean, I don't, it'd be nice to have it on there, but I had them both on mine. But the spring on the other side really didn't do what I wanted it to do. What else is new? Okay, this is that big long nut and bolt for the bottom A arm. We're gonna go ahead and get that started. I know you can't see. Not tightening anything down. The other side is, but uh, like I said, it's pretty much done. So, what I'm gonna do My jack, this jack, I've had it a lot of years, and it always has uh, bled off since, since I got it. Let's hit the bumper. Let's tear it up. Yep. Come on, keep doing it. Um, it's always bled off. I don't know why. So. Something I just have to fight with. Ugh. Spindle next. Again, don't tighten anything down, but definitely make sure it's on there. Now see, that one... This nut won't go on that. It came off of the... No, it's funny how it looks on the other one, but it won't go on that one. Don't ask me. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying right now, what is he doing without bolting that up there first? I tried it bolted up. This spring compressor decided that's not what it wanted to there it went I was gonna say don't tell me that's somebody's changed sizes on me but I'm telling you I could not get that spring compressor to work proper and boy was it a fight to get that spring in and I don't mean a little bit actually I don't need it super tight but I need it tight enough Okay, that's that moves a lot easier than the other side. Um, is it just because of that? That doesn't matter. Anyway, so <laughs> here's where the fun begins. Let me go get the spring. In this particular kit, the white paint mark right there is the top. You can see how it's, well, you may not be able to. I'm trying to angle it to where you can see it. Ah, see, it's pretty much straight, pretty much straight cut. If you look at the bottom, and you can see it's not near like that. The coil's way off. So this is the bottom, and it goes in that, goes up against that stopper. 
Comes with an isolator. Goes on the top, and you've got to thread it on there. And make sure you do it the right way. I think it'll go. Gotta stop, it'll stop it right there. I think I did it right. It may be it may I may have it upside down. You know what? Well, I don't think it is. You know what I probably did, probably put the wrong side on the wrong one, but it doesn't matter, it's not going anywhere because it's pinched up in there pretty good. But what you run into is now mind you this isn't where it belongs. And I could possibly get the string up everywhere the way right direction, put it right there, and I could possibly try to fight getting that spring up in there and then trying to compress it. The problem is I cannot get it compressed and start those two studs at the same time. You know, they go into that. I mean, you're just, you're just really fighting a losing battle. I don't care how much jack you got and this thing is going to be at a super funny angle. And when I try to, when I try to stick it up there, Everything's trying to fall over and twist and bang and everything like that. And then like I told you with the fork through there This big huge fork which has to be on the top like Right here somewhere where you can't see what I'm doing. It will not go in that shock tower I don't care what you do. So I know what you're thinking. We'll turn it upside down and run it the other way well, that would be That would be wonderful uh, but the, the way this hooks, let me try to show you what I'm talking about. I gotta take the spring down. Which is, that's good on the car. Huh? The problem is, this thing goes in there like this inside the spring, and here's your adjuster. If I turn that upside down, that's not, not going to work. There's no place to get access it. So you have to do it this way. So, <laughs> what I've been doing, and I don't have this thing all the way out, I can already tell, it's going to be a fight. I've lubed the crap out of this thing, so. Now that I've touched it, it's all covered with some type of slime. And that's bent. I did not bend it. It was lightweight when I got it from AutoZone. Okay, this washer has to stay on top because the fork rides there. This has to go down in here. And then you have to magically hold it in place, which it works great. <laughs> but like I said, since you can't get that fork in there, it just doesn't work. So what I had to do is raise this up one notch, one, one coil on both sides, which also limits me on stuff. And then I shove this thing down in there and put the fork on top of the strut tire. And I used one of the bolts that holds that little cover there on top, that little strut, the shock tower, whatever you want to call it, the shock mount. And I shoved it on there so it couldn't slide that direction because I needed it, you know, as centered as possible. So this is basically what this ends up looking like. But you cannot put it on the A-arm. It actually has to go up inside, and it is a pain in the butt. And I can't hold it all at once. And I will probably drop this four times and be really aggravated.
And then I just tell all the washers just all fell down exactly where they need to go. So, yeah, this is already turning into the normal nightmare that is me. It's kind of half resting on top of the A arm, which is probably going to fall here any second and cause a bunch of calamity. Okay, and I'm trying to think of what I did. to set anything on this car. It's all sheet metal. Alright, you probably cannot see what I'm doing, but <laughs> I'll show you here in a second what I'm done what I'm doing. Fight, fight. Better luck with that one. I'll show you one mess up with here. I know it's pain in the butt. Trying to get just a little pressure so I can adjust a couple things here and hope that everything stays. Okay. I'm covered with crap here. Can't touch the camera yet. All right. I do not recommend doing this, guys. But I tried everything else and I could not do it any other way. So basically, this is now on top. Squared up as I could. I took one of the bolts that held it in there and kind of half bolted it down so that it this can't slide that direction and I centered it up the best I can it seems to stay it's not pretty and then uh, where's my light and then uh, that's basically what it looks like and you try to adjust this to where that's going to line up with this and it may not um, one thing I ran when I got done on the other side the thing was sitting here instead of over here and the more I messed with it it finally broke this thing off but I got it to sit here and then using a pry bar I finally got it over to about here it's not 100% where I want it but it is a whole lot better than when I started and I had to take my pry bar and bend this thing it has to be cocked at a pretty good angle so that, uh, because here in a minute, when I start tightening this up, this part of the spring is going to go over top of that. When you slide this, you know, and this has to go a long way up. Here's the bottom of the spring, and right there is the hole that this goes into. So that's how far that spring has to go up, at least five, six inches. No, probably six to seven inches. That's how far you have to compress the spring. That's why I tell you it gets kind of scary kind of quick because 
It's not that I don't trust this tool. It's the 25,000 guys who used it before I did. What else did they do to it? It's obviously the shaft is bent. What else? You know, how much play, how much slop, you know what I'm saying? So that's my concern is uh, it is the tool, but it's not because of it, what, who made it, where I got it from, or whatever. It's because I have no idea what was done to it before. So make sure it's in the pocket up top as best it can. It's not much. It's just got a little bit of a, a ridge around it, and it seems to be. This is pretty close to... I could actually turn that, I'm sorry, turn that just a bit, just to make sure. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it's close enough, because as I'm tightening it down, it's actually going to want to rotate that way, and I think the other one wanted to rotate the other way. So I may move this spring a little bit. I'll put you back up here. You're not going to see a whole lot, and I do apologize for that. But it um, is kind of the way it works. Move anything that's going to fall off. These 500 bolts I put up here and nuts, they won't last. They're going to roll off. <laughs> so let me, uh, and I'm not going to use this for the whole thing. I ended up using my ratchet so I could do a little bit more fine adjustment, see how much pressure, torque, and stuff like that was actually on it. I'm going to turn this like this. I'm going to turn the spring. Like that, just a little bit more. Yeah. All right, for what it's worth. machine wants it'll do it more but I'm just gonna be just gonna be using it up so I have been getting that uh, half inch ratchet get run it down and believe me it hasn't moved a whole lot and I don't like standing in front of it Moved it about two and a half, three inches up so far. Problem is, when I go to put it up, the spring before was too far in, and that caused me all kinds of problems. So then I'm getting a pry bar in there, trying to pull the spring out with all the tension on it to try to line it up with the AR sitting right in front of it. So what I mean, this is not, this job is not really for everybody. <laughs> what I probably should have done is took it down to the front end shop, gave him all my parts, and just told him to put them in. Where am I at? It's like we're about four inches up. a little bit more pressure on my jack. It doesn't necessarily need it yet, but uh, it helps to, when I go to put this on, it would be nice if I could get to everything, if that makes any sense. About five inches up. 
lost an ear plug. Didn't need that anyway. I know you can't see what I'm doing. How's it looking? Well, I've seen worse. Uh, I can experiment, but I've still we got a ways to go. Oh yeah. <laughs> I still got two branches to go. Uh. I know a lot of guys use impacts on these. That's entirely up to you. That's entirely up to you. All right, I'm within. It's like I'm within about an inch. I got a rest though. Uh, um, I, I separated the, um, uh, yeah, there they are, um, the, what, what I told you, the shims for the alignment, I separated front, back, left, right, whatever you want to call it. This is one side, which has, uh, a tremendous amount of garbage on. I may have to clean some of them off. Uh, but uh, anyway, these are the shims for the back side and then that's the other side are over there. Keep them separated. You're going to put them back in. I mean, you don't have to put any in, but your your camber is going to be so far off. In this case, it's got to be pretty close. So I know I said that already. We just want to make sure you knew. Uh, all right, come on. I hate to say, my job don't require me to work for a living, really. I do have to climb tanks, but it's a whole different thing using your arms. But I guarantee they're going to be so tomorrow. things here have to be adjusted. Now 
This isn't hurting anything, trust me. Let's see if this helped me any. Well, it's closer. I went just a little too far. I'll tell you, that already went in better than uh, the other side, but my spring is off. I can already tell you. When that spring comes down, that coil right there needs to be on the left side of that tab sticking up, and I can tell you I'm off some. So uh, I'm going to have to, uh, what I'll probably do is I'll put a nut on this side, on, uh, you know, on the back side of the firewall, or uh, inner fender, spring, whatever it is, and then I'll leave this side loose and possibly pull it out just a little bit, see if it gives me enough. See before that spring on the other side was actually towards the, um, it was actually pushed back towards the back side of that uh, spring, spring pocket, spring spring whatever anyway uh, and because of that I really had to pry on it to get it to work this side doesn't seem to be as bad so anyway uh, but you can see how much I've compressed that spring she's tight or if you don't think there's a lot of pressure on that you'd be dead wrong because I had to raise that spring up six eight inches basically from here because it was actually below this line which goes all the way across about where that paint line is, all the way across, it'd be like here, you know, it's, it's be straight, all the way up the bottom of that spring. So anyway, that's what I'm saying, this isn't a, <laughs> this isn't a easy, fun job. It's dangerous, and it's not fun. Okay, let me get uh, a nut started, at least on this side over here, so that that can't come back out. And then see if uh, I move this out a little bit. That line that spring up a little bit better. Yes, it did. Now I won't put the washer on, but can I start? Oh man, there's still actually room for the washer too. Nuts only go one way. Lettering goes to the outside. Must be a type of a lock or something. Okay. Now, that's you. what I can do now, since that's actually pretty close, is I can actually jack this up. And what that's going to do is possibly line this up some. Or, <laughs> Better yet, the jack could not be where it belongs, and it's going to kill me here in a couple of minutes. Just a tad, and I hate it. 